unique, and I think most of you have picked up uh, the recipes, and if you haven't, they're in the back. And again, these are all recipes I've credited somebody else for. I'm not doing any copyright. I'm not selling them. I didn't make up these recipes. They're just favorites of mine from some of these books. So uh, we're making the chickpea broccoli casserole. So the first step is these are garbanzo beans that have all been drained and rinsed in a colander. I'm going to just put them in this bowl to mash them with a good old-fashioned potato masher. And this takes about two or three minutes to get it to the right consistency. And so, of course, I have a story because it's Kate. The one over there, <laughs> that found this recipe in Vegan with a Vengeance. Me, I always look for a number of ingredients and directions, and if it looks, you know, not too bad, I'm like, okay, I'll try that one. Well, she made it, and it was delicious, and her dad, I think, said, this is my new favorite. I could eat this at least once a week, so I'd love to hear that, because then I'm like, okay, that's one week, one day down. <laughs> so, <laughs> I do make it quite a bit. So you're just kind of breaking up the chickpeas a little bit. And what I thought about with this recipe after I made, I've made it many times is that you could probably use any three cans of beans, any combination of vegetables, and incorporate different spices and get it more of a, you know, a savory taste like with sage and rosemary and thyme if you wanted a more mellow bean like a, a great northern bean or something, um, you know, and use different vegetables. Kate loves curry, so even though the recipe didn't call for it, she said, oh, I'm going to put some curry in it. We all love curry too, fortunately, in the family. So that's how I make it today. We add, and it isn't written on there, but we add about about a tablespoon of curry, which I guess is a lot of curry. <laughs> it's so good and good for you. <laughs> so here's the consistency. You see, they're they're kind of mashed up. They're not. Some of them are whole. Some of them, you know. And it, it, there's no great signs to this. You just kind of. So we just dump that into the bowl. And even though I've made this a zillion times, I'm still going to fact check myself to make sure I get this right. Add the vegetables and mix well. The beauty about the cooking class is all these lovely pre-made um, or pre-chopped up stuff that I met the first job. <laughs> I, there's dish soap in there. So then it just says add the vegetables and you know this is just, I saved the stalks, I'm going to use those later because mostly you just want the tender broccoli tops and kind of about bite-sized pieces. So. You just dump that in there, grated a whole bunch of I grate two pounds of carrots at a time with my food processor, use them in recipes, and then I've got them for salads and sandwiches during the week. So it's just kind of an easy and quick way to get it all over it at one time. So bam, put those in there. Oh, bam, I just stole some famous cook guy's wine. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> and onions, which are very strong. I haven't opened them until now, but oof. Now you'll notice I use, um, didn't used to use red onions that much, but after Dr. Greger was here about a month ago, did, was anybody here for Dr. Greger? Oh, yeah. what is Fabulous. Yeah. Oh, it was such a great, two hours, I can't believe for two hours he had us all like, oh. But um, he talked a lot, you know, it was all about food and what's got the most nutritional kick, especially for the buck. And what you find is it's always food with more color, has more antioxidants. So he said, why would you ever eat a white onion? when the red onion basically does the same thing and it's got that color, which means it's got more antioxidants. And I used to always just use those for salads because it looked pretty in a salad, but now I'm using it in everything. And it goes kind of a funny color when you saute it, but I, it doesn't look so red. But, um, but anyway, I'm just mixing the chickpeas and all the vegetables together. And I wish I had a big glass bowl because it's so pretty, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tilt and show you. Because look at the color of that. Isn't that just so pretty? And it's got to be good for you with all those beautiful colors. Then the next thing you do is add some breadcrumbs. And again, this is one of those recipes, you know, you could, I always kind of wing it with amounts. If you want more of that the bread in it, you could put more. I mean, it's only half cup, and I just happen to find they had cornbread stuffing. Usually I wouldn't use this, but it, it just tastes like dressing. But that's basically what you're looking for. The breadcrumbs, like at your typical grocery store, at well, which will remain nameless, have a paragraph of ingredients. I don't know why breadcrumbs need like all these, and, and they're all things I can't read and don't understand what they are. And they have a, a lot of fat too, but a lot of like bad fats, hydrogenated, saturated, that type of thing. So this is about a half cup. It's probably a little bit more. So we're going to mix that in. Just kind of binds it together a little bit, I think. I think that's what we use it for. <laughs> and now it calls for oil. We're not big in the Fricker family adding oil to food. So uh, we like to get our fat from 
from the source. Like if I want to have olive oil, I just eat some olives. If I want to have nut, I'll just eat some nuts, avocados, things like that. And there's very few recipes, except maybe some of that you're baking, that you actually need the, the fat that it calls for. So I just don't, I just don't use it. And this, it, it was perfectly fine with that. I'm sure you'll get a little more flavor and you'll say, hmm, there's that fat flavor I love so much. But do you need it? I, I don't think so. That's just my personal opinion, though. So that's all mixed up. And now we have some vegetable broth, which I made ahead of time. That doesn't look very appetizing, I know, but it's good. <laughs> it's really good. And I use, I'm going to show you the kind I like to use. And again, I get this from Sunseed. It's just their vegetable bouillon cubes. I mean, you're all familiar. They're just coming that little, you know, tin foil wrap. And this is good for two cups, you know, two cups of hot water. And you just, and I made a, I, sometimes I make a bunch up for a couple of days and I can have recipes that I need it. I mean, you can buy now, I know at Publix, they're carrying an organic uh, vegetable broth. I, get, uh, I think it's Swanson makes it. Which is great. It's all made, ready to go, all good ingredients. It's expensive though, but that you pay, you know, for the convenience. I think it's like two ninety nine for four cups, which I think I paid two ninety nine for that whole package, and that gives me like twelve cups or something like that. So I'm just mixing this because it set a little. And you just um. Oh wait, what was the last thing? Uh, chives. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, chives. I, I don't do chives. I don't know why. I just, <laughs> like I said, you can do it if you want. I'm sure it would add like a wonderful flavor. And the, and the time I make it with chives, I'm going to say, why haven't I been using these chives? But I just didn't. Did you use chives the first time? No, that's why. She set the tone. She didn't use the chives. This is the curry. It's three, about three teaspoons of curry, and, the, and it says a teaspoon of salt. I put about a teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to shake that over. Now, this curry, too, it, um, it's, it's a mixture of two kinds, just one plain curry, but one that Kate brought back from Hawaii when she went on spring break last year that has some, it's exotic curry, so it's got some uh, pepper in it, a little bit of red pepper flake, so it, it can have a little bit of kick, but not, you know, not too much. And then you just pour your veggie broth over, and then just mix it, and voila, the thing I like about this, you mix it all like this, Throw it in your casserole dish, which I don't have, because I literally I ran out of casserole dishes. I borrowed some, and I still didn't have enough. Um, but I, I have one made already that we're going to eat the wonders of the cooking presentation um, afterwards. But you would just take this, put it into a 9 by 13 pan, press it down, put it in the oven. That's it. And for an hour. For first 45 minutes covered, last 15 minutes uncovered. And then you have this delightful casserole that all you need is a green salad next to it. And you, you've got everything you need. Any questions about chickpea well, broth? My question is, have you ever made it like with a chicken broth? Because I make more chicken, chicken. broth. <laughs> oh, no. I don't do chicken. That's okay. That's all right. Okay, so I'm just going to... Is it solid when it's baked? Yeah, I'm going to show it to you right now. And I'm going to put it back up. I've just got it on the warming tray right now. But this is this is baked. And if I, maybe if I just walked down the aisle with it, you could smell the curry. I think so. Okay, so on to the next recipe.